Sometimes, I am asked to help investigate what happened. Not necessarily because it's a criminal matter, but more of a civil matter. I was hired by the JRT Associates to help them build a case against the Ambrosia Tech. There was a death in a small apartment in the Rose District of Eden City. Bad things are not supposed to happen here. And yet there was a death of a retired, a retired Vanguard Marshal. Ethel Everett named Evergreen. She was on the front lines of the Vanguard during the Great War when she was promoted to Marshal. And even after her retirement from the Vanguard, she is still taught free first aid classes. Everything from CPR, stitches, how to clean wounds, and how to properly administer insulin. Evergreen just wanted to help people. She had visitors every day, and she had numerous friends, family, and neighbors to check up on her. And yet, when her body was discovered, it was found out that she had been isolated in her apartment for several days. And it even took days for her body to be discovered when her neighbors complained about the smell. And yet, even after her death, her phone was still sending out texts to her friends and family. Her bills were still paid on time. Her bank accounts were still open. Posts were regularly made on Chair My Day. Even her Wi-Fi was active. So now it was a question of it was foul play and accident or something else entirely. Everyone loved Evergreen, though. She had no enemies. Her friends and family all only had love for her. Nothing was taken from her apartment, and there was no evidence that anyone except her was living in an apartment with her. So I was hired to figure out what happened to her, and why her tech was indicating that she was still alive and well for weeks after she had died. The following sequence of events is what I put together from her phone records, her personal journal accounts from her loved ones, clues inside the apartment, and records from the Ambrosia tech. The story I put together tells us that Ambrosia Tech was indeed responsible for the death of Evergreen. However, not in the way that's currently illegal in the Empire of the Seven Cities. And that's why I'm helping JRT build a case against Ambrosia, both to get justice for Evergreen and to make sure something so cruel doesn't happen ever again. Tragedy started with a simple problem. Evergreen's door would not unlock was a fairly new software managed lock. It did not allow for an analog method of opening the door. It was meant to be locked and unlocked with the push of a button, either on the wall or on her keychain. As she got older, her arthritis made it difficult to open the old analog locks, so these soft locks were supposed to allow her to take care of her independence. After a few different attempts, she called Ambrosia Tech's customer service for assistance where the associate promised to send over a technician to repair the soft lock either that day or the end of business the next day. Evergreen thanked the associate, assuming that would be the end of it. Except the associate never actually generated a ticket for the call, so no technician was ever notified. The associate didn't notice and moved on to the next call without knowing what they did. So Evergreen texted her friends to inform them that she was ill and not able to go out that day. She likely was trying to avoid embarrassment. She was known for refusing to disclose anything bad happening to her because she didn't want to be a burden. So instead, she tried to head over to her fridge to prepare some food for herself, only to find that her fridge had also been locked. Whatever was causing her front door to lock also forced her fridge to be locked as well. It was also Ambrosia Tech, a kind of smart technology all connected on the same network. Ambrosia Tech in her fridge, in her door, in her windows, in her phone, in her computer, in her Wi-Fi, in her insulin pump, in her pacemaker. All of it Ambrosia Tech, all of it connected on the same network. Her granddaughter was a high-ranking executive of Ambrosia Tech and provided smart home technology to her grandmother. Top-of-the-line technology when it was created in 2755, only to now be legacyware by 2760. Technology that Evergreen didn't want to replace every year like most people who use Ambrosia Tech. 
After all, it's pretty difficult to replace your own heart every year. Unable to even open her fridge, she tried accessing the fridge screen where she got the first message that would eventually spell her doom. We no longer support your legacy. An error message from Ambrosia Tech used to indicate when a tech used his legacy wear that was no longer supported. Still, it was an unsettling message for Evergreen to see. It felt personal. And even if it was an impersonal message from a corporate entity, it was a cruel message to send out to an old woman. Now, unable to access her fridge, Evergreen went through her pantry for something she could eat. Grabbing some pasta, she tried her stove, only to get the same message on the touchscreen on the stove. We no longer support your legacy, it said on the stove. Burners wouldn't even turn on without software. She couldn't even cook for herself. Now frustrated, she tried to call Ambrosia Tech again. Her phone, having updated in the few minutes between calls. As she tried to call the customer service line, she was given an automated message from her own phone. We no longer support your legacy. The automated message repeated to her again and again. Any number she called, she was given the same automated message. We no longer support your legacy. We no longer support your legacy. We no longer support your legacy. Even when she tried calling the police or the vanguard, her phone only gave her the same message. Judging by the way everything was thrown around the apartment, it seems she tried multiple times to try and break her windows or get her neighbor's attention. The glass was unbroken, and none of her neighbors noticed that she was trying to leave her apartment, locked in by her technology. It seemed she calmed down by this point, and she convinced herself that eventually the technician would get there to let her out, or that a friend would come and try to visit, and she could communicate through the door that she was locked in and needed help. However, interviews with her friends and family indicated that they got a text from Evergreen that she was ill and couldn't have visitors. Some of them still have the message from Evergreen's number. However, it is a question of who sent the text when her phone was refusing to let her call nor text. Next, it seems that Evergreen tried to take a shower or a bath, only to have no water come out of her pipes at all. Her water heater was also Ambrosia Tech, and being an unsupported legacy meant that no water at all was allowed to come out of the pipes. No water of any kind was allowed into the apartment without approval from Ambrosia Tech, with one exception made. Toilet still worked without the Ambrosia water heater. Evergreen's journal grows more hysterical at this point. She stated that she felt tired, her head hurt, her mouth constantly felt dry, and she felt that she was growing hungrier far quicker than she normally does. Her journal detailed how she tried to eat any food she could access that didn't need to be cooked. However, she was still hungry even when she ate everything in the pantry, including raw flour and sugar. She detailed how she grew thirsty enough that she drank out of her toilet's reservoir to stay hydrated. She also cited frequent urination and how she kept falling asleep. Her anxiety was getting worse and how she felt like the walls were closing in on her and how she felt like she was going to die in her apartment, unable to reach out to anyone. In her more lucid moments, she had theories about what was happening to her. She believed that her pacemaker and her insulin pump were also deactivated because they were also Ambrosia Tech. Recovered logs from the device's software indicated that the devices kept turning on and off during the days that Evergreen was isolated, occasionally turning on to help keep her alive, but it hardly kept in a state that anyone would call healthy. The insulin in her pump crystallized quickly and she was unable to replace her insulin because it was kept in her fridge, where, which was locked. And that was practically heaven compared to what her pacemaker was doing to her heart. 
When Evergreen tried sleeping, her heart cycled between 200 beats per minute and less than 40 beats per minute, forcing her to experience night terrors and panic attacks as she tried to sleep. And when she was awake, her heart was at a sluggish 50 beats per minute, keeping her exhausted and mentally off balance, all while she tried to find new ways out of her apartment. Judging by the blood, her torn off fingernails, and even the scratches around her door, she tried to force the door off its hinges, and it raises the question of who at Ambrosia was targeting Evergreen. It couldn't be her granddaughter, because her granddaughter did not have access to the credentials to declare a software supported or unsupported. What is clear is that there was near constant updates from Ambrosia Tech, forcing her biotech to barely keep her alive, but to also torture her as she struggled to survive in her apartment. Drinking water out of a toilet's reservoir, unable to properly clean herself, unable to feed herself, unable to call for help, and unable to even call out after a few days. Her journal indicated she stopped writing after two days in her isolation. Her body was located on her bed, and judging by the bed sores and the condition of the body, she was stuck in bed for at least three more days as she slowly died of dehydration, likely in a diabetic coma. Her legacy was no longer supported, and she died alone in her bed with her loved ones none the wiser, killed by something that could have easily been avoided if her tech didn't immediately lock her out when the company no longer supported the software. While such deaths are not unheard of, there have been many other deaths where hackers interfere with pacemaker, insulin pumps being affected by magnetic fields where none are, were expected, or even a case where a mechanical ventilator went through an update while in use and stopped functioning during the update, causing someone's death. However, this is the first time such a thing has occurred to someone of such prominence. Legacyware, or abandonware, as it's known by most people, is software that is no longer supported, no longer able to be bought, and sometimes no longer able to be obtained. This case raises some interesting questions. Ambrosia Tech has a policy that causes any software that is no longer supported to be immediately locked and inaccessible, whether it was a prototype software for a smart fridge, home security, or even the software that tells a pacemaker how to function. If the case is simply treated as an accident of an update that had unexpected consequences, so the company is not responsible, it may have dangerous implications down the road. If companies can simply lock essential biotech with no warning, that puts people at the mercy of the company. If the company can simply decide to lock you in your house so you cannot even manually unlock the door, then the company can hold anyone hostage. If an update can keep you from turning on the burners of your stove, then the company decides what you eat and when you eat it. If a parent decides to turn off their child's insulin so they fall into a diabetic coma, parents can be arrested. If a boss decided to lock their employee in a room with no water, the boss would be fired and arrested. So if a company did it both, why would we let the company get away with such a crime? This case, Everett versus Ambrosia Tech, would be the beginning of the cybernetics rights movement. As technology grows more advanced, people's lives depend on their tech to keep them alive. So treating biotechnology like it can be easily swapped out, like a light bulb, or something that can be turned off without consequence, like a stove, fails to see the person around the biotech as a human being. For a lot of people, turning off their biotech would be like turning off an internal organ. You cannot do that safely, and it certainly cannot be done without warning. The ultimate ruling of the case did put Ambrosia Tech as the responsible party for Evergreen's death. The policy of simply locking the tech the company no longer wanted to support 
led to a death, and now the company would have to allow for manual activation of any unsupported devices. Locks would have to be able to be unlocked even without power, stoves would have to work even without Wi-Fi, and fridges couldn't lock their owners out. The pro most prominent change after this case, the agreement that biotechnology needed support, even if the company that created the biotech could no longer do it. For some countries, like the Sunset Republic and the Triple Alliance, that meant their universal health care would also cover biotechnology, funding new companies that would work directly with their governments. For other countries, like the Seven Cities, that meant companies that could maintain biotechnology were allowed to exist. An extension of private health care that meant if you could afford the care, you could afford maintenance on your biotech. If you couldn't afford to maintain it, you could try to maintain it yourself. And then for some countries, like the Kingdom of Vespucci, it simply meant that biotechnology couldn't be locked by software. The genie was now a out of the bottle, and it was a wake-up call for much of the world. Technology was advancing at a rate faster than it ever had before, and both the world and the laws didn't have the chance to keep pace with the changes. As laws were created to state that biotech organs couldn't be shut down as abandoned wear, companies began to argue that denial of payment meant that organs could be shut down or repossessed so the companies could afford to exist. After all, if people didn't have to pay for their biotech after they had received it, why would they pay at all? And while law debated, technology ran.